Welcome to Protege Talk. Today I'm really focused on 15 definitions you must never forget. Words matter. Words are pictures. Pictures decide decisions. Decisions schedule seasons. Words are pictures. Pictures decide our decisions. They are why we make the decisions that we make. God said to Abraham, see the, st see the stars? That's what your kids are going to be like. See the sand on the seashore? That's what your kids are going to be like. Pictures decide your conduct. Pictures of yourself. Pictures of another. Pictures decide our reactions. Our reactions create seasons and pictures. And, and anyway, that's what I want to talk to you about today. Fifteen decisions if you got a pen. And it's real big to me today that you write this down because every culture has a vocabulary. If you sit around talking to mechanics, you're going to hear sounds, words that are different. If you sit around the table with pastors, there's a vocabulary, there's a language. If you ever go into a group of uh, mothers, single moms, and they're sitting around the table, you're going to hear a language of their own. Listen to little kids talk. There's a language. And every culture, whether it's a culture built by age, similarity in experience, sameness of purpose or goal, you get the Olympic runners together, they're going to talk a certain way about certain things. Transitioning into the mind world of another person is critical. It's essential. It's important. In protege talk, I want to talk to you like you are an Elisha wanting someone who's been before you to talk back and say, this is what you may experience. A mentor sees an enemy before the protege does. A mentor can pre pre uh, predict a consequence of a wrong decision, the reward of a right decision. And I can tell you today that 62 years old, been in the ministry, and I've walked to the pulpit over 17,000 times, that definite definitions really matter. If I say daddy, I think of a father who prayed four to six, ten hours a day who loved the presence of God. You may not. You may think of a man who came in late at night drunk, hitting your mama. So everybody has a different definition. When some people think of the word church, they think of an old, staid, orthodox, oh, hell, the power of it. Somebody else has a whole different feeling. So any time that you're wanting to enter a person's mind world, you must know, do they understand what I mean by this word, by this definition? Number one is the word wisdom. Maybe when I say wisdom, you think of an elderly man with gray hair sitting there with his, remember that little picture of the thinker? His uh, chin on his, on his palm thinking. But wisdom is the ability to recognize difference. Difference in right and wrong. Difference in people. Difference in a moment like the blind man crying out. Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Difference in an environment. His word was present to heal. Difference in seasons. A time to be born. Ecclesiastes, a time to die. Wisdom is the ability to see the difference in an opportunity. So, I'll give you some definitions, and that's the, to me, that's the strongest definition. I'll give you some others. Wisdom is the ability to anticipate a consequence. Wisdom is the ability to anticipate a consequence to a decision, to behavior and conduct. People are in prison because they could not predict the consequence. Thousands of people in prison said, if I could live my life over again, I'd do it different. I wouldn't do this, but... They could not predict a consequence. They could not anticipate, I guess is the right word. They could not anticipate a consequence. Another definition of wisdom is the wisdom is the law of God applied accurately to a problem. 
the law of God applied accurately to a problem. Another definition for me is wisdom is the divine solution to a human problem. The divine solution to a human problem. That's wisdom. Number two, honor. Write that down because the difference in people is who they have chosen to honor. Honor is the rewarding of difference. Like we'll come into a room and we'll have uh, a man will stand up when a woman enters in a room or to a table and stand and, and pull out the chair for her. He is honoring her difference as a woman. A man may come in the room and nobody makes a move. My father comes to the room, we may stand. He's 92 years old at any table. His choice of the conversation matters. If daddy wants to talk about something, it goes that direction. It's a matter of honor. In the Boy Scouts, they have different little medallions and you can win this ribbon. It's that way in the armed forces. It's that way um, in, in school. Whether you're going to graduate and go from the fifth grade to the sixth grade to the seventh grade, honor is the rewarding of somebody for their difference. Now, we know that the law of difference rules the earth, that God uses the law of difference as a reward system. And my eye is not my ear. My ear is not my tongue. The law of difference. Honor is the willingness to reward people for their difference. There are four areas that there should be honor. Many more, but let me give four. One is the tithe is the only scriptural documentation of the way to honor God. He said in one place, your mouth is for me which shows you that you can actually talk or pray and ask God for things and even worship and yet have a different heart. But he says, if you want to honor me, honor the Lord with your substance. Proverbs 3. There's a lot of references about the thousand sacrifices of Solomon to the Lord, the thousand. Honor. The tithe is proof of I'm honoring God for his difference. He is, in my life, the source. I'm the receiver. God's the source. It's honoring of difference. We know that in Exodus, the first commandment with the promise was number five. There are ten commandments. The first four have to deal with honoring God. The last six deal with honoring people. We know that I cannot change your life till I change who you have chosen to honor. The Bible said if you would honor our mother and father, it would go well with us all the days of our life, that it may go well with you. So we know that longevity is not a God decision. The length of my life is not God's decision. The length of my life is a decision based on honor, who I've chosen to honor. He said, I've written these things that you might know who to honor. The tree of knowledge in the Garden of Eden was actually a tree of opportunity. It gave them an opportunity to prove whose voice they would honor. Another person to honor, obviously your mother and the father, your family, is your boss, the one who writes your checks, the one who celebrates your gift. Probably no member of your family has written you as many checks as your boss has. So we honor the boss by completion. And my boss is an old word. You can tell I'm 62, can't you? I don't think they're using that word these days. Fourth is the recognition or the honoring of a man of God. Forty-two Israelites' children screamed out, Go up, O bald head. Didn't seem to bother the prophet, but it bothered God because they had spoke that way, disrespectful of a man of God. Two she-bears came out and ate them. Miriam and Aaron were brother and sister to Moses. They criticized Moses for marrying a woman of another race. Leprosy came on them. Didn't show honor. Not until Moses prayed did the leprosy leave. Same thing with Gehazi, the servant of Elisha. He didn't honor the gift of access to the man of God nor his standard. And because he came and chased down Naaman to get a gift that was meant for the prophet who had rejected it, leprosy came. Be real careful who you dishonor. Peter looked at Ananias and Sapphira and said, what's tempted you to lie to the Holy Ghost? Be real sensitive about the honoring of your pastor. I listen for honor in a conversation and when I hear dishonor and disrespect, I know that a third voice 
I could look at the countenance of someone and know that a third voice has entered the arena. It's dangerous to sow the seed of dishonor because dishonor is the seed for loss. If I know who you have chosen to dishonor through tone, through disloyalty, through accusation, through slander, through false statements, or just through scorn, I hear it. My, my biggest fear for America is not the abortion issue or the homosexual issue. My biggest fear for America is the spirit of scorn that has entered toward leadership and men in high places. Three, excellence. Excellence is the highest level of quality presently available. It's different than perfection. Perfection is the highest level of quality possible. The Bible said the Lord will perfect that, bring it to its highest level, that which concerns me. Excellence is doing your job right, doing it with the highest level of quality presently possible. You ever had one of your little kids come up and maybe you got four children, one come up, Daddy, look, Daddy, look, I, I colored. And we look at it and, and maybe they missed the line and maybe they got off. Oh, baby, that's wonderful. Based on their age, based on their capability, it was good. Excellence is the seed for pursuit. If you perform with an excellent spirit like Daniel, you're pursued by leadership. Learn to listen with excellence. Develop excellence in listening. Develop excellence in learning and in communication. Conversational skills, be accurate. Develop excellence in appearance, presenting yourself because presentation is the seed for acceptance, presenting yourself for Prosperity. Is prosperity Rolls Royce and diamond rings? I don't think so. Prosperity is having enough divine provision to complete a divine assignment or instruction in your life. If God has given you a five by seven dream, you need five by seven money. If God's given you a 16 by 20 dream, you need 16 by 20 favor, 16 by 20 energy. It is important for you to understand prosperity is not a bonus, an option. Prosperity is a command. It is a reward for obedience. Prosperity comes through the following or the honoring of the law of God. The Bible has two parts, the gospel, the person of Jesus, his principles. One's the life of God, one's the law, one's the king, one's the kingdom. One is an experience with God, one's an, a, the expertise of God. According to scripture, it is not a God experience that creates your money or your wealth or your prosperity. It's honoring a law, a law of focus, a law of honor, the law of difference, the law of relationship. Five, you want to write this down because it's important. We're talking about 15 definitions you must never forget. A seed, what is a seed? Tomato seed, watermelon seed, page. A seed is anything God has given you to bless somebody. A seed is anything God has given you to bless somebody. Now, if you want to broaden it, a seed is anything that creates a change, that creates a difference. A seed, mercy is a seed. Battle is the seed for territorial order. Confession is the seed for mercy. Mercy becomes the seed for forgiveness. Repentance is the seed for forgiveness. Confrontation is the seed for correction. Knowledge is the seed for change because changes in our life are proportionate to knowledge. Gratitude is the seed for more. You're a walking collection of seed. And I want to just say this because it's really important that you see yourself as a warehouse of seed. There'll never be a day in your life that you have nothing. And there'll never be a moment in your life that you don't sow. And there's never a moment during your lifetime you're not reaping. Paul writes about giving and receiving, breathing in, taking in, inhale and exhale. Life is all about sowing and reaping. 
There will never be a day that you don't sow. Because even a seed of nothing produces a season of nothing. Six, a harvest is anything someone else gives you that blesses you. A harvest is anything someone, it may be credibility, association, a word of encouragement, it may be money, it may be a birthday present, or it may be caution, a warning. A harvest is something somebody else does for you. God uses people to bless us. You're a walking warehouse of harvest. You're, you've been alive this long because you received constant harvest. Somebody spoke a good word for you. Seven, seed faith. We're talking about definitions. It's important to learn. Seed faith is sowing something God has given you to create something else God has promised you. We'll hold it there on the screen and they'll put it there. Elijah looked at the widow of Zarephath and said, what do you have? She said, just enough for me and my son. Here's a pancake. He said, okay, let go of it and you'll never lack in the harvest. The meal barrel will never run dry. The cruise of oil will not fail. Mark 10, the reply of Jesus to Peter included the reference to the hundredfold return during this life. He was talking about sowing what you've been given to create something else you've been promised. Malachi 3, the tithe, which means 10% of my income, whatever God gives me, 10% goes back. And it authorizes financial covenant and partnership. Eight, sowing. Now it sounds that everybody would know what sowing is, but I actually got an email the other day and someone says, how do you explain sowing to someone? Sowing is planting a part of yourself into the life of another. Sowing is taking a piece of something you are, know, have, and sowing it into the mind, the life of another person. It can be your energy. It can be your correction, your warning. But it's, it's, it's the active part of turning your seed into the harvest of, for another person. Because your seed is another person's harvest. Whatever you've been given is your seed. If you sow it into another, it becomes their harvest. Your seed now becomes the harvest in another person's life. Sowing is planting a part of yourself. Ten, a mission statement. We often hear references to a mission, which means like purpose, function, desire, goal. What is a mission statement? It's a, and you want to write that down, it is a written goal that explains your focus and your future. For instance, if you drive up to the Wisdom Center, and I sure hope you do very, very soon. If you hadn't been here in the last few weeks, we God's doing some great things here. And it's worth flying here for, even to where our next conference is. But you might want to write this down. It's a written goal that explains your focus and your future. The Bible says, Write the vision, make it plain so he'll run who reads it. When you drive up to the Wisdom Center, you'll see at the top, there's a sentence. Pursuing, proclaiming, and publishing the wisdom of God. Now there's another part of it, but that's the first basic primary part. Pursuing, proclaiming, because God runs the universe with his mouth. God doesn't do anything but talk. Words are the creative and corrective force in the universe. God loved words so much, he called himself the word. Proclaiming and publishing, publishing the wisdom of God. I'm holding in my hand 1,001 wisdom keys. 1,001 wisdom keys of Mike Murdoch. It's not available at any store in the world. It's got pictures, et cetera, over 100 pictures. It's only for my partners who plant the $58 seed into our vision of trying to reach people. Now, why do I call it proclaiming and publishing? The Bible said, great is the company of those that publish the gospel. God's the publisher, publish the word. So that's our mission statement. And then if I continue, and it's there to enable those in the body of Christ to achieve and complete their divine assignment on the earth. And that's the role of wisdom. Seeing difference so I can complete God's assignment in my life. 
It's your reason for living. It's what you'll be doing every day. It's an explanation to people around you of your conduct. I think I may have got a one off here. I'm going to put another one. Did I miss one? I think I missed one. Next, an opportunity is an invitation to an experience. You might want to write that down. The only divine obligation God has to every human is an opportunity. God's so serious about an opportunity that he jerked Jonah out of the belly of the fish so Nineveh would have one last opportunity, invitation, to change their behavior. An opportunity to learn, an opportunity to earn respect or money, an opportunity to speak, an opportunity to ask, an opportunity to reach, an invitation to reveal, an invitation to verify your loyalty, an invitation to create change, an invitation to correct, an invitation to apologize. An opportunity is an invitation to create an experience or have and receive an experience. It's an invitation. Whatever is missing in your life is because you did not perceive a divine opportunity that entered your life. The Ethiopian eunuch in Acts 8 saw an opportunity for Philip to come in to the chariot and explain the book of Isaiah to him. The blind man cried out, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. Why? He saw opportunity. He saw opportunity. Next, I think I missed a number, so I'll, I won't give the number here. Obedience is the honoring of an instruction. Obedience is the honoring of an instruction. That's all obedience is. I've said many times that if I cannot trust you with an instruction, I cannot trust you. God runs the entire world through instructions. We'll talk about that in a moment. Obedience is the honoring of an instruction. When God told Adam and Eve, do not partake of the tree of knowledge, they did anyway. They ignored, they disobeyed. High importance is obedience. It's the only way to earn divine favor. Obedience is the seed for favor. Obedience is the seed that sustains the favor of God in our life. Obedience reveals trust. It's the only proof of trust. When I obey the Lord, it's proof I entrust Him. Write this down. Integrity, next is integrity. Integrity is doing what you promised another you would do. Integrity is doing what you say you will do. That's what integrity is. Now it comes from other words and there's a lot of different meaning. To me, it's very simple. If you do what you say you will do, you have integrity. Pay your bills. If you leased a house from someone and you don't pay your monthly note, you're a liar. You're a fraud. Call the person that you owe and say, how can I work for you four Saturdays to earn? And I'll get out of the house as quickly as possible, but I'll still pay you. I think that bankruptcy is an excuse that some people use to not pay their bills. And in my opinion, this is just me, but even if you, even if you file for bankruptcy, you still owe the person. Legally, you may have escaped your legal uh, responsibility to pay somebody what you owed them. But in the eyes of God, he said, owe no man anything except to love. Very important. Next. Write this down, hospitality. Hospitality is the ministry of comfort. Hospitality is the ministry of comfort. Abraham was a master at it. When the Lord and two angels visited before they were en route to Sodom and Gomorrah. Do you remember the conversation that Jesus had? Peter was very, Peter had a touch of Absalom. He didn't like the attention this woman gave Jesus and she was washing and crying, bathing the feet of Jesus. He said, and the disciples said between themselves, which show they never, the disciples never thought Jesus was poor because one of the 12 was a treasurer. They said, we could have sold this perfume 
and uh, help the poor. So you know they didn't think Jesus was poor. Neither did they think he was worthy of the woman's perfume. I read where one writer said the, the money the woman spent on that perfume was two years of her income she had saved up. I don't really know. I read that. Jesus looked at them and said, since I came into your house, you have offered me nothing. You hadn't done a cotton picket thing. That's the word Mike Murdoch, Louisiana language. He said, you hadn't done anything for my comfort. But since I came in this, this woman has not ceased to wash my feet and to show me honor and to remove my discomfort. Hospitality is a seed. It's a ministry. Next, write this down. Mentorship is learning from the discoveries, experiences, and pain of another. Mentorship is learning from the discoveries, experiences, and pain of another. It's the impartation of knowledge. Elijah mentored Elisha. Paul mentored Timothy. Elijah mentored Elisha. Uh, Moses mentored Joshua. Mordecai mentored Esther. Naomi mentored Ruth. What's the purpose of mentorship? Is to access your future without the season, the wasted season of waiting. It's to access tomorrow without the pain of loss. It's to achieve a goal without the painful experiences. If I know who you're willing to listen to, I can predict your decisions. It's wonderful being with you today. I'll be right back in just a moment. I want to just pray a special prayer. Father, we receive this impartation today knowing that presence is a ministry. And I release the presence of the Holy Spirit right there at your house, right there at your computer where you're watching. I decree that this year will be 12 months of miracles and that what Satan meant for evil, God will turn it for your good. I decree your harvest. Amen. I never tire of the wisdom of God. Wisdom is the ability to recognize difference, right and wrong, evil and righteousness, difference in people, difference in a countenance, difference in a moment, like the blind man crying out to Jesus. The dominant purpose for wisdom, and don't you love the wisdom of God? So thankful you're listening today and watching and being a part of the internet, telling others about it. And I hope you're getting, by the way, I hope you're getting my daily podcast every single day on your iPod or your MP3, every single day, two minutes of wisdom. Be a blessing. Sometimes I go a little over because I get excited. I want you to be a part of this ministry. I believe that when you get involved with God, he gets involved with you. I am one of the ministers of the gospel who believe the words of Jesus. I believe every word he said. When he told Peter that there would be a hundredfold return on any investment in the gospel, in Mark 10, 28 through 30, I believed him. When the word of God says in Malachi 3, that if I bring the tithe, which is 10% of my income, and the offering back to him, that he would open the windows of heaven and pour me out a blessing I don't have room enough to receive, I believe him. Why would I believe God about heaven and hell and not believe him about the blessing of the Lord? I want to pray over the seeds that you have been planting in this ministry. And by the way, I have an incredible gift you're going to love. In fact, it's probably one of the greatest gifts I've ever offered. We're asking the Holy Spirit for 300 partners this week who will set aside a seed of $300 for our outreaches. I need your help. I want you to help me. Not just to feed a thousand children a day, which we do, or a thousand families, or underwrite the wisdom of Asia Bible College, or to underwrite the tent factory in South Africa, or the home of hope, but that we can go into 100 countries with the gospel. I'm holding in my hand the wisdom quick scan Bible. The wisdom quick scan Bible. I have never in my life found a Bible easier to read. As you know, for many years, I've read the Bible through 40 chapters a day, every single month of my life. When I found out that I could offer it to you inside of some of the teaching that I've been doing and I'll do today, I want you to have it. Call me right now. 
plant your seed of 300 and watch God move. 